two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker, a.k.a. Shags, here again for another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. It has been a little while, basically since, I believe, January 1st, since I have had an episode. I apologize for that. Still trying to figure out life, still trying to figure out this podcast, and hopefully I can get it all lined out here very soon. I've got a special meeting, actually, tomorrow, uh, which would be Thursday, And I'm going to be uh, doing a Zoom call with a branding company that helps you kind of figure out what uh, kind of what your calling is, what your expertise is, and then how you can be of service to people. And so that's what I'm kind of looking for. I, you know, a lot of these episodes are just uh, behind the scenes of what's going on uh, here in Enid, Oklahoma, and behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck Studio and Enid Buzz and the podcast and all that stuff. But uh, what I'm wanting to do is find the direction of how I can help you guys. So if you guys are listening to this, um, I, I want this podcast to be entertaining, but I also want you guys to come back for uh, you know information or things that help you because I want the podcast to benefit you guys. I want you guys to uh, either learn things, uh, get motivated, or or stuff like that. So hopefully tomorrow... Uh, We'll find out if these uh, people can help me uh, find my direction, and then if I can, then I will kind of have, I guess it it gives me an idea of what my niche is going to be or what to focus on for you guys. So anyway, I am back. Uh, Appreciate you guys. It is, uh, what is it, March uh, the 22th, and so I thought it would be a great time to do a quick podcast episode, and uh, I had an adventure in Los Angeles this last weekend. So that's basically uh, what I'm going to be talking about tonight, Uh, kind of a cautionary tale on electric cars. And just to let you guys know that if you guys have a chance to go on an adventure, always go on the adventure. So this episode is Go on the Adventure. So if you guys have listened in the past, you know that I have two daughters. Both daughters are on Division I collegiate palm teams. The oldest daughter is on the OU palm team. The youngest daughter is on the Arkansas palm team. And so now that football is over, we've been going through a basketball season, and we have gotten down to March Madness and... Uh, because my youngest daughter is just a sophomore, usually the seniors and then maybe sometimes the juniors, those are usually the only ones that get to travel to the big game. So she's kind of not getting to travel. But my oldest daughter at OU is a junior, so she got to travel to the OU women's basketball March Madness games in Los Angeles. And once she found out that, she actually found out on her 21st birthday. She was here in Enid for spring break and uh, turned 21, and we had all these plans and stuff. We're going to go out and eat and stuff. And then, well, basically the day before her birthday, um, she found out that she was going to have to head back to Norman, hop on a plane, and then head to L.A., So, which was kind of cool for her because her spring break, which was just going to be hanging here in Enid, turned out that she got a couple of days in Los Angeles to goof around there before they had to start palming palming on Saturday. So about Wednesday, well, about Tuesday, I think we found out on Tuesday, uh, my wife kind of mentioned something like, you know, oh, it would be fun to go. Uh, Wednesday, she kind of joked, um, well, Tuesday night, and she said, you know, we ought to fly to L.A. and go watch her palm. And I kind of rolled my eyes like, yeah, you know, uh, we're not going to do that. And so she checked into uh, airline tickets, and they were, you know, like $700, I believe, for round trip. So that had been $1,400. And just to go see her palm and when they palm in basketball especially for like tournament games they don't really get to do a whole lot they mostly sit at the end of the court and just kind of cheer while they're sitting and then uh during a couple of timeouts they get to stand up and do you know just a few cheers and stuff so it's not really a huge deal but um so then my wife was like okay we don't want to spend that much on airline tickets but if we drove, it's only a 19-hour drive, and it only cost us $300 in gas. And again, 
I kind of rolled my eyes, and this was like on Wednesday, and so so the game was on Saturday, and if they won, they would play again on Monday night, and again the game uh, is the games were in Los Angeles because UCLA was the host team, and so it was at the Poly Pavilion. So uh, she kind of joked around that, like, and, and, you know, I didn't really take it that seriously because I'm swamped, had a bunch of work to do, trying to catch up on all kinds of stuff. But then Thursday, uh, a friend of hers calls and they got to talking and she said, yeah, um, you know, we kind of wanted to go, but uh, getting airline tickets, you know, at last minute is kind of hard. And trying to get the tickets back because it's so late, they're expensive, and, and blah, blah, blah. But And her friend, uh, being a great friend, said, hey, I've got a lot of airline miles that I may never use. Why don't you guys use my airline miles? And so Thursday night at about 8.30, here I am doing work, um, have no plans. So a lot of work that I do, uh, especially for like Enid Buzz, it just it's kind of like I do a lot of it the night before, and then throughout the day I have to continuously do updates and and post things. And so I had I didn't have anything ready. So when I go on vacation, usually I try to post a day or two ahead and and get things set up so I can continuously post things and keep things updated while I'm on vacation. Uh, so at this point I had nothing done, and uh, she comes out to my office and she she says, hey. My friend said we could use her airline miles. Uh, there's a flight leaving at 8.30 in the morning. Well, so we live in Enid, and the airport is in Oklahoma City, so that's two hours away. So you got a two-hour drive, so you'd have to leave at 6.30. Well, then they want you to be there an hour early, so that's 5.30, and it's 8.30 at night, and I haven't even packed or gotten any of my work done. So I was like, no, you know, there's just no way. So then she says, well, they have an 1130 flight um, out of Oklahoma City. And I'm like, you know what? And so this this is kind of the the theme of part part the theme of the episode is uh, go on the adventure. And so I thought to myself, instead of thinking of this as it's disrupting my work and I'm not going to get anything done and I'm going to be behind, this is a chance to go to Los Angeles and, and goof around in L.A. with my wife and just do stuff and then also get to see my daughter, who just turned 21 and we didn't get to spend her birthday with her, um, you know, get to see her palm in a March Madness. So, and not only that, but I get to go to a March Madness game and uh, on the UCLA campus. So I thought, okay, let's just rethink this, look at this as an adventure and not as, you know, hey, I got too much to do. I can't leave. So I said, okay, let's do it. So um, stayed up pretty late trying to get stuff done, ironed out for posts and things that I had to do. Uh, did most of my packing, got to bed late, of course. Uh, was able to get up uh, about the normal time that I usually do. Of course, I had to skip my my run and my workout and all that. But uh, got everything packed up, and we got on the road to Oklahoma City. So we're driving down there. The flight um, was leaving somewhere after 11, 11.10 or 11.30, somewhere around there. So we needed to be there an hour early. On the drive down, I believe, is when my wife started uh, trying to book uh, transportation. So once we got there, you know, we didn't have anybody to pick us up or or any of that. Uh, And actually, our daughter at that point did not even know we were coming. And, and, and we, uh, so my youngest daughter luckily was heading to Enid that night. So she was going to be able to take care of our dog. Otherwise, you know, we didn't have any plans for the dog. We had no plans for anything. Uh, but she was coming home for her spring break. And so my wife booked a rental car and come to find out, uh, when you book a rental car, in California, it's cheaper to get an electric car than it is a gas-powered car just because they want, you know, you to use clean, green energy. And so it was 55 only $55 a day for a Tesla. 
Well, luckily, we had had a Ford Mustang electric car in Enid, and the Ford dealership was trying to promote it, and so they were letting people drive it for a day if they would write a blog post about it. And so uh, me doing Enid Buzz and having my uh, Curtis Tucker blog, I drove it for a day. So I knew a little bit of the ins and outs of driving a an electric car. So we didn't think it was that big a deal. Um, and you know, here in Enid, I only drove it for a few hours. Uh, I think I kept it for the day, you know, overnight, but I didn't really drive it that much. But anyway, so we, so we get, uh, we get to the airport. Um, we're there an hour early, kind of hang out. We uh, get on our flight, leaves on time. We fly to Denver and have a uh, probably, a, I don't know, short hour layover. And then we fly from Denver to Los Angeles. We get to Los Angeles and you have to hop on a bus and the bus takes you to the Hertz rental. And we get to the Hertz rental and uh, check in and then they say, you know, here's your card. So uh, electric cars don't have keys. They basically kind of have a, like a hotel card to get into a hotel room these days. So you got your your card. And so we go out to get in the Tesla, and literally nobody goes with us. Nobody comes with us to explain anything. So we get in the Tesla, and within five minutes, you know, I, I know basically if you put your foot on the brake and put it in gear, it pretty much goes. And so that's all we knew. That's all we knew about the car at all. Uh, so we get in, and if you've never been in a Tesla or an electric car, they basically have nothing in them on the dash. There's there's no dials, there's no gauges, there's no lights, there's no anything. It's just barren. And what they do is they have this, like an iPad, kind of in the middle, and that's got everything on it. You control your heat. You control, you know, opening your trunk. Everything basically on the electric car is on that iPad. And so, and then on the steering wheel, there are two levers. And the right lever on a Tesla is basically how you put it in gear. It's, it, instead of it being a blinker, um, you know, you go down all the way and it puts it in drive. Then you go all the way back up and puts it in reverse. And then if you push in on the end button, it you can put it into park. So you really just do it with your finger. And then on the other side, the uh, lever is for the windshield wiper and the lights. And other than that, everything else is controlled by the iPad. So anyway, so we get in and uh, my wife puts in the phone you know, her phone where our hotel is and we start cruising. So within 15, 20 minutes of, of leaving the airport and getting to Hertz, we get in a Tesla and I am driving on the 405. And, and I don't know that there's ever a time when the 405 is not busy. So we get on there and uh, my wife gets a little nervous and has this exit a little early to get to the hotel. So we end up not getting lost. We just end up taking a long turn and have to go through some, uh, basically we're in Westwood, which is West Los Angeles, kind of a little past Beverly Hills and, and Hollywood uh, down and then between those and Santa Monica. And so, uh, you know, not a bad area, kind of a nice area. So we get on, finally get on Wilshire and uh, Wilshire, and Wilshire is where the hotel is. So we get to the hotel, and um, we notice in the parking, and okay, so and then she had booked rooms, and I'm not sure how, but the, the rooms are only $300 a night, which you would think in Los Angeles, and especially during March Madness, they would have jacked up the price because we've paid way more than that at, you know, these uh, college football, during college football weekends, we paid a lot more than that. So we didn't think that was bad. But then, of course, they zap you with, uh, or maybe it was, two, it was only $200, $200 a night, but then you had to pay like $47 a night for parking. 
and so we we get up to the parking garage and we notice they've got electric car parking where you can plug your cars in. And when we had left the Hertz dealership, he looked, he said, how much power do you have? And we had 59%. And he said, just bring it back at 59% or we charge you $35 and, and then we charge it. And so, so we left, um, we had 59%, you know, maybe it got down to like 57, 56%. And we pulled in and we thought, okay, we're good. So we parked, uh, we hung out at the hotel, um, got, uh, a few f- glasses of free wine. And then by that time, my daughter had figured out because of different comments my wife had made and uh, some of our social media posts that we were going to surprise her. She knew. So anyway, they were out running around doing the Hollywood thing. And then they came back. And as they came into the hotel, she spotted us. And so um, so we got to talk to her. She got to eat dinner with us. Well, and what we decided to do, it was St. Patrick's Day. So it was Friday the 17th, it was St. Patrick's Day, and since she was now 21, we had never gone out with her since she was 21, we decided to go to, uh, I think it was called the Braxton, and it was a uh, Westwood, uh, Los Angeles uh, pub, so we went there uh, to eat dinner and took her there, you know, drove the Tesla, uh, got done eating there, went back to the hotel, hung out at our hotel room a little bit, and then uh, basically we all hit that sack and went to bed. And then we got up Saturday morning, and we told her and the cheer, uh, the Palm team, and, and when they went, they only took four, I believe, four Palm girls. Um, because they only, you know, like I say, they only take either seniors or, you know, it's a really small, uh, team. So I believe there was four Palm girls there. And then there was like four cheerleaders and, uh, four, maybe two guys and four girls. And then, then the band, some band members were there, but of course it's just a miniature portion of the band. So anyway, we told the Palm girls that we would take them to breakfast, uh, only three our daughter and two of them went and so we got in the tesla and basically they found a spot to eat called the breakfast club which is a really cool restaurant on vine only a block from hollywood and vine and they serve really cool breakfast with huge pancakes where they put cereal and it's a fun colorful restaurant so we went there found a parking spot on the road got there fairly early uh, and we ate there, and then we noticed that they had the the stars of the famous people out on the sidewalk. And so we followed the stars up to Hollywood and Vine, and that's basically Hollywood and Vine is where the stars start, and they, they start going out down Vine Street and then down Hollywood Avenue. And so we kind of hung out there a little bit, and then they wanted to grab some coffee at a, a cool coffee spot shop down there. So we got some coffee and then um, took them back to the hotel because they had to get ready for the game that night, which left my wife and I some free time. And so we drove to Santa Monica Beach and went to the Santa Monica Pier, uh, stood in the ocean and uh, did the whole beach kind of hanging out thing and then decided that we were going to go to the game about an hour and a half early so we could tour the UCLA campus because my wife at one time in high school had thought she might uh, go to college at UCLA. So we went to check out the campus. So we drove from Santa Monica to UCLA. And, you know, by then we were probably in the 30, you know, 38% um, battery life on the car, still not really worrying about it. Um, And so we uh, toured the campus, which was really a beautiful, UCLA's got a great campus, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of students, Just, I mean, more students than I've probably ever seen at a campus on a random night hanging out on the lawn. 
uh, in hammocks, playing guitars, playing frisbee, had their dogs, studying, all that, all that stuff you see in, in a movie they were actually doing. They were, there were so many students just hanging out. So uh, toured the campus, uh, went ahead and went in when they opened up the Poly Pavilion, got our seats. We'd got, I, ha- I had gotten online and bought uh, tickets, so our tickets were literally, you know, uh, A, B, C, D, four rows up in the middle, uh, center court. You know, uh, it, it's a way easier to get women's March Madness tickets than men's, and so uh, so we got really great seats. So we're uh, sitting there, and um, you, uh, OU plays Portland, and OU ends up winning. And so we left the game and went back to the hotel, met our daughter there. Oh, heck, I, I think at first I, I, I missed something. So, so that was Saturday night, um, and then we didn't really do anything Saturday. I think we had, we had dinner at the hotel Saturday night and didn't really go anywhere. Um, but Saturday, now, I forgot to tell you about, uh, so we got there on Friday, and, uh, and I missed my run on Friday morning because we, were, we had to get out of town to go to Oklahoma City, and I had to pack and all that stuff, and I just didn't have time. So I wanted, I made sure, you know, I was like, okay, I got to go on a run on Saturday. So Friday night, I had kind of looked at the map to see where I might want to run, and it turned out that I could run from our hotel straight down Wilshire to about two and a half miles, got me to Beverly Hills and uh, Rodeo Drive. And so I thought, well, that'd be kind of a cool thing to see at sunrise on my run. So Saturday morning, uh, that's part of my adventure. I was like, okay, let's make an adventure out of running. I ran uh, down Wilshire to Beverly Hills, uh, took a lot of pictures, got to Beverly Hills, looked around, saw the mansions, saw the actual Beverly Hills with the sign and the the uh, neighborhood and, and all the mansions, and then went to Rodeo Drive. I kind of ran down it a little bit and kind of looked at what stores were there, uh, just hung out, you know, just a few minutes, and then I ran all the way back to the hotel. So I probably got in maybe five, probably about five miles. So that was Saturday morning. Then, of course, then we ate uh, breakfast, all that, and um, back to the hotel. So so Saturday night, when we got back to the hotel, we decided we weren't going anywhere. So um, we had to figure out how to charge the Tesla. Well, we had no idea. So finally, we figured out that um, you push this button on the screen and this this covering over one of the back backlights pops up and there's this little hole that you plug the plug into. But what we found out was when I took the end off, to plug it into the car, it didn't fit. Well, come to find out, you've got to have an adapter. Well, we didn't know where the adapter was, so after some searching, it was in the, I can't remember what they call the trunk, but the trunk is in the front because there's no engine. Uh, there's just a big battery, so there's no engine in a Tesla or an electric car. So you have room in the front to store stuff because there's no engine. And so the we found out that the adapters are usually kept in there. And so we opened that and the adapter was in there. So I put the adapter on and plugged it into the car and uh, looked at the screen and it said, getting ready to charge. And there's this little light uh, above or next to your tail light where you have plugged the power in and it started, uh, it turned green and flashed. And I was like, okay, we're cool. And so we went in again, had dinner uh, went to bed overnight, so I'm thinking, okay, we're going to come out, and surely overnight this thing's going to be at 100%. So, so that was on Sunday, and uh, it was a little bit rainy and drizzly, and the Palm team was going to go to a beach, and so my daughter decided to hang out with us rather than going to the beach because it was kind of a, again, kind of a drizzly gray day. So we decided to go do some sightseeing. So um, we and we decided that we were going to eat at In-N-Out Burger because none of us had ever eaten at an In-N-Out Burger. So we were going to go at 11. 
So we go out to the car in the hotel, uh, covered parking, and turn on the the iPad, and it said, and so it had been at 30%. We'd gotten it down to 30% the night before, and so turned it on, and it said it was at 30%. So I was... I was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding. And so basically come to find out you can't rely. So the first first lesson, well, it wasn't the first lesson. The first lesson was you have to have an adapter and you have to know where the adapter is and then you have to know where to plug the car in. So you figure all that out. Well, then come to find out all charging stations are not reliable. If they're broke, they don't like say, they don't like just not work. They still light up and they still if you're a newbie to the electric car thing, you kind of think, okay, it's it's lighted, and my car said getting ready to charge, so I just assumed it was working well. Out of all the plugging stations in the hotel, I picked one that did not work. Basically, I, you know, I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't work. So, so before we left, I plugged it back. I unplugged it and I plugged it back in. And again, it's did the same thing. It said getting ready to charge. It started blinking green. But then the, when I waited there long enough, the light turned red and it shut down. So that's when we realized, oh, it's a bad charging station. Well, you know, I didn't know that there would be bad charging stations. And the, the cool thing about the charging stations at the hotel is they were free. So, um, you know, you pay $47 parking, but you get to charge your electric car for free. But we didn't get to charge it because it didn't charge overnight. So so now we're at 30%. So we leave, go to In-N-Out Burger. Um, I could probably do a podcast on In-N-Out Burger. But again, we'd never be, been there. We went to a very large one there on the UCLA campus, Um I'm a huge burger fan, burger lover. I can say that uh, the In-N-Out Burger was probably the best fast food burger I've had. Uh, the fries were great. Um, just lo- loved everything about it. Super cheap. Couldn't believe how cheap uh, the burgers were. So we ate lunch there, and then we decided to go to Hollywood and Highland, where the Chinese theater, where all the stars put their handprints and all that, and then... Right next, to, I didn't realize that right next door is the Dolby Theater where they now host all the Oscars. And so, so we drove back to Hollywood, and by the time we got there, I think we'd gotten down to about, oh, it was probably in the low 20s uh, by the time we got there, or maybe even 19%, I can't remember. But So our power was getting low, but I thought, well... We should have enough to make it back to the hotel and plug in a, into a good one, or we'll find a charging station. You know, it's California. They want everybody to use electric cars, so you just pull in and you go to a charging station. So we went ahead, and, and it by then it was starting to drizzle. Uh, we found a parking space, had to walk about five, four or five blocks to the theater uh, craziness there. I mean, I understand where the name Holly Weird comes from. Uh, you know, homeless and people in costumes trying to get you to pay them money to take pictures and um, just all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, going on. But we did make it. Uh, you know, I John Wayne's handprints and. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis and Kobe Bryant. I think they had just unveiled his. So there was all these uh, things going on and more stars all the way down Hollywood to get there. And then we went into the Dolby Theater and checked that out. And then there's a kind of a, a patio with a, these steps up to this balcony at the Dolby Theater on the outside of it that looks straight towards the Hollywood sign. So you can take great pictures of the Hollywood sign off in the distance with palm trees in between. And so we did all that, um, hung out for not a long time. And then uh, my wife and my daughter kept trying to talk me into going to Universal Studios, you know, the amusement park. And I'm like, and by then the temperature dropped, I think it was either in the low 50s or 40s. It was drizzling. It was cloudy. I had shorts on, uh, no coat. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't, 
I don't want to go ride rides in the rain and, and be cold. And so I kind of kept and I'm usually the one that wants to go to the amusement park and loves the roller coasters, but um, definitely like the roller coasters when it is warm. Uh, so so I kept poo-pooing that idea. So we get in the car, and I believe it was at, I believe we were down to by, and then we drove around a little bit, and then we got to 19 percent on the power of the car. And I knew we were going to keep doing some other stuff. So I said, okay. Let's go find a power station and charge this baby up, and then we don't have to worry about it when we go do some stuff. So we get our our iPhones, and you just basically type into Google or Maps, you know, electric uh, charging stations, and all of a sudden these they start popping up. And not knowing anything, you know, uh, the closest one I see, well, the, the closest one was across the street in a parking garage, but they were charging, and I can't remember because there were so many different prices, but they were charging money to get into the parking garage. So number one uh, warning is if you see a charging station on a map or a phone, it could be in an area that is a parking garage where you have to pay money to get into just to charge your car. And so that's the closest one was that parking garage. And I didn't want to pay the money, which I, uh, looking back, I should have, um, I didn't. And then another thing is you don't know. So, so if you go into the parking garage and you pay, you're paying for parking, but you're really paying to go charge. Well, if they've got like five charging stations and they're all being used, you can't charge your car. So, but you don't know that until you go in and pay the money. And so I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So uh, another one popped up that was just, you know, maybe five blocks away, six blocks away. So we drove down there and come to find out it was in a parking area as well, but it was outdoor, but it also, you had to pay to park. And I think it was like $4 and 50 cents an hour. And so I was like, uh, you know, well, first it was a little hard finding it. Um, because there's not like a big sign there. None of the gas stations that we passed had charging stations. So it's not like you can go to where you get gas to get your electricity. So, uh, so, uh, you guys out in California, I don't know why you don't figure that out and have charging stations where you normally get gas. But, um, I can tell you this whole, I was not thrilled with this whole electric car thing. Uh, it might've been great if you bought your own Tesla and drove it to your house and plugged it in at your house. Fine. But, uh, being from out of town, never having done this before, this was not, a pleasant experience. And so, so we go, so finally I pull up and I'm trying to decide, do we want to pay to go into this parking lot to, and you know, I can, and we don't even know where the charging state, you can't really see the charging stations. It just says they're there. So I'm like, okay, we're going to have to pay to go in and go find these charging stations. Well, while we're sitting there debating, uh, a security guard comes out and she ask, you know, what's going on? I said, well, according to my map, there's charging stations here. And so we're just trying to make sure. And she goes, oh, well, yeah, they're right over there. And I'll let you in and let you out. So she was going to let us in for free. And I thought, great. So we pull in and there's like this parking lot. The area where they're at is like a horseshoe. So it's a real thin drive where all the cars are pointing in the same way. Well, you go around the horseshoe to get to, and I think there was like maybe two, two or three. I think there might only have been two charging stations, and there was only one parking spot left. So I, I can see it, and I know in my mind what's going to happen when I get there, but there I don't have a choice at that point. So I drive around the horseshoe and pull in, and I'm thinking, okay, they've got this figured out, and there's probably like a, a really – long cord and it's going to re- so so when you pull in the only way to pull in is to pull in forward because all of the this the lane that gets you to these parking spaces only goes one way there's only room for one car and it only goes one way so I pull in and I'm thinking in my head um, you know the charging cord at the hotel would not reach 
from the front of the car to the back. So I don't think this is going to reach, but surely they're smart enough to have figured out that if you've got to pull in forward, your only your only choice is to full, pull in forward. Surely they've given you a long enough cord to reach the back of the vehicle. Well, they didn't. They didn't. So they've got charging stations with cords that only reach the front of a car, but you can only charge the car in the back of the car, and you can only pull into the space forward. So basically what I had to do was back out leave the horseshoe and then come back into the horseshoe backwards driving well I so I went in into the horseshoe the wrong way driving forward and then backed into the parking space with the charger so now when I leave I'm going to be going the wrong way so if there's any cars coming you know they're going to be honking at me but I'm like I don't care so I back in and I take off the charging cord and I've got my handy dandy little adapter because uh, we'd already been through that so I put the adapter on and all of a sudden I noticed that where the cord meets the kind of the charging head it's all frayed and you know it's kind of like it's not it doesn't look securely connected and just looks like a, a old headphone wire that's starting that's gotten pulled a lot and it just it looks like it's worn out um, but I'm thinking okay I don't care I'm going to try it anyway so I plug it in I pull out my wallet and I get my credit card and I go over to get this thing going and there's no place to stick your credit card in so I get to reading the instructions on the thing and it says you know either use your power card which basically i'm assuming is this this credit card for electricity only card or use the app and i'm like well i don't have the app on my phone because i don't own an electric car and i don't have the card because i don't own an electric car so how am i supposed to pay and so i'm like Oh my God, I can't believe this. And so I, I'm super frustrated. Um, and then I'm like, well, I'm not going to go through all this hassle of downloading this app and trying to pay if this cord is bad because of the experience the night before. Now I'm leery of all power stations working or not. So I'm like, okay, let's go to the next one. So so I pull out, and of course a car is coming. The guy gives me the eye. I back back into the spot to let him go by. I pull out, and then I have to go backwards out of the horseshoe just to get out of there. Okay, so now I now now we're down to, you know, we're getting into the, you know, maybe 18, 17% power. And now I'm super frustrated and getting really irritated. So I pull up to the, the gate, and the lady told me, you know, when you leave, just buzz me, and I'll let you out. So I pull up to the gate because you can't just drive in and out. And when you pull up, it doesn't automatically come up. You, you have to put a ticket in. Well, I didn't get a ticket because she let me in for free. Well, as soon as I pull up, somebody pulls up behind me. So I push the button, and I'm thinking she's going to come on the intercom and, and say, you know, and, and so I push it. The phone rings and rings and rings and rings, and an answering machine picks up. So she's gone. She's gone somewhere, and she's not there. Well, the person's behind me, and I've got no ticket. So... I can't back up because they're behind me. I can't go forward because the gate's there. I can't, the lady's not answering the phone. I have no ticket. So, uh, you know, now, you know, heat is coming out of the top of my head. So I push it again and um, she never answers, but all of a sudden the gate, she must have been somewhere and came back and noticed me. And, and in the nick of time, the gate goes up for some mysterious way because I'm sure she saw us out the window or something. So we leave. And my wife, in that, in the meantime, had found another spot with charging stations. So we go there, and it is in the parking lot of a grocery store. And the geniuses, what the geniuses did there was they put the charging stations in the corner of the parking lot but in an area where cars had to drive in for their pickup orders and park. So it was probably the busiest corner 
of the parking lot. It wasn't just some random corner. It was a corner where if you came to pick up your groceries, that's where you had to turn and park to wait on your groceries. And then there was three charging machines with two core, all I'm, I'm just going to call them hoses, cords, whatever, on each side. So it looked like you could charge six vehicles at one time, but there was only three parking spaces. So um, there was two cars that were charging, and there was an empty space, and then there was a handicap space right beside them for some odd reason that was just making everything weird. But as soon as we pulled into the grocery store parking lot, the car in front of us, literally right in front of us, went into the space, the last space to charge their car. And so we're like, okay, that's that's fine. We'll just sit here and wait. Well, then that's when I realized we are waiting. You know, there's like, there's like nowhere to wait. There's not like a line or a waiting area to use to be the next in line for the electric charging. So I am basically blocking the area of the parking lot where people are coming in to pick up their to-go groceries. And of course, it literally is the busiest corner of the grocery store. So, I, so basically, I pull up into the handicap spot and let the car go by, and then I back up because I don't want to lose. I don't want to. There's no place to park, and I don't want to kind of go drive around and leave, and then not be the next in line. So I kind of got. I've kind of got to stay there to be the next in line. Well, then I noticed that so there's two cars that are parked across from the charging station and they both have their cars running and one of them had been a car that had just pulled out of one of the charging stations i have no idea what they were doing but they they had left the charging station and then parked and they were taking up a parking space with their car running for no apparent reason they sat there about 10 minutes and then finally just left don't know why they were there but then I noticed that the car that had been next to them, the guy was sitting there facing the charging stations with his car running. But what was weird was when we had pulled in and the car in front of me had pulled in, this person had not, you know, zipped across and got into the charging, the the third charging spot. He let the guy that was in front of me go. And so I thought, well, if he was wanting to charge his car he would have gone into that spot, and he didn't. So he must just be sitting there, which I thought was odd. Why is this guy sitting here with his music blaring? And so anyway, but that left a spot that I was able to back into to wait for the next charging station. So, But what I noticed was the guy that had just pulled in ahead of me, it took him like 10 minutes to get out of his car before he ever went and got the hose to plug his car in. So so now I'm super frustrated that I've had to sit there 10 minutes and this guy hadn't even started charging his car yet. So then all of a sudden he gets back in his car. And I'm thinking, okay, and and I think I think he plugged it in or he did something with the hose. He got back in the car and I'm half paying attention. So I'm thinking, okay, um, all these people are charging. Surely one of them's gonna be done in a minute. And then, then I notice he gets, like, five minutes later, he gets back out of his car, and he pulls out his wallet. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy hasn't even paid yet. He's just now, he's been sitting there 15 minutes. So I get super frustrated, and I get out of my car, and I charge over there. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I can't take this anymore. Tell me why, you know, you've been sitting in your car and have it. So I go over there, and I'm like, um, and, and because... At the charging station before, you could not use a credit card. I walked up to this guy and I said, hey, can you use a credit card on this 
charging station. He said, yeah, it looks like you can. Well, then I noticed that they, he and his wife, his wife was in on the driver's side. They kind of, I could tell they were foreign. And I, for some reason, I think they were like from, and I don't know, but I'm just saying it was, they were somewhere like Norway or Sweden or something like that. I could just tell from their accent and the way they looked. But I think they were in the same situation we were. They had no idea how to charge an electric car. And they, I think what they were doing was in the car, they were reading the instructions, trying to figure out how to charge their car, and they couldn't figure it out. And so the guy was, he was trying to, you know, use this credit card, and he, he wasn't, he was not able to get his charging station to work. So I went to the guy next to him who had been charging his car the whole time, and I said, I said, I think I said something, and he said, he said, that charging station doesn't work. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding. He goes, yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't work at all. And I said, oh, okay. So here we are again at a charging station that doesn't work, but it doesn't tell you that it doesn't work. So very frustrating. So I tell the foreign guy, this guy just said this charging station doesn't work. And so he kind of looks at the other, the third guy that's been sitting there and he's like, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to sit there and wait on one of those two hoses, um, cables. And so I go back and sit in my car and now I'm, you know, fairly frustrated. But then all of a sudden out of the blue, the foreign guy backs up and they leave. So I think they got frustrated because they didn't want to wait. They didn't know exactly how everything worked. So they left and then the car, let's say there was a car on the right and the left, the car on the left that had been charging, they get done and they start to leave. And before I can do anything, because I was going to have to turn around and back in. So before I started to take off, the car that was next to me shoots in and gets in where that car just left. So now I'm back to having two cars charging and that empty spot. Well, I noticed that that empty spot, if you backed into it, the working hoses from either of the power stations would reach it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to back in there, and whoever gets done first, I'm going to get their hose. So I back in, and then I noticed that the guy, the brand new guy that had just started charging his car, his charging station had two hoses. So I get out, and I said, hey, are these hoses like, does one charge fast? Because I could tell they were different. I said, does one charge fast and one charge slow? And he said something like, yeah, that's something, something, something. So I said, okay. So I grab it and it's got this weird handle on it that doesn't look like anything that I've seen before. So now we're on, you know, now I'm like seeing handles that I don't even recognize. And so I'm like, okay, that's not going to work on my car. So I put it back and I go to the other guy on the right and I say, hey, how much longer do you have? And he says, uh, you know, like six or seven minutes. So another six or seven minutes, he, he finishes up and he leaves. And so I'm like, okay, finally. So I open the little power thing. I go to get the hose. I get my adapter and I try to stick the adapter on the end of the hose to put in my car, and it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And so these charging stations are not for Tesla cars, I assume, because the adapter wasn't even close to fitting on to these hoses. So we have sat there for probably 20 minutes or longer, waiting on these power stations that finally do accept credit cards, but now their hoses don't connect to the Tesla or they don't connect to the adapter I have either. So now I'm like, I'm, I, it's just gotten so bad that it, it's almost comical. And um, we've been sitting there waiting with the car running. So now we're down to like, you know, 12 or 13%. And uh, my wife says, okay, I'm like, you know, we're done. There's nothing we can do here. So we're either going to have to make it back to the hotel or keep doing this all day long. And so she says, well, let's go to, there's a, I think it was called City Walk or something like that over by 
Universal Studio. It was kind of this walk around area before you get into the amusement park with stores and shopping and restaurants and things to look at. And she goes, well, let's go there and hang out before we go back to the hotel. Well, it was a little further away than I thought it was. And so now we're down to, you know, like 12 or 13% by the time we get there. But we pull into their parking lot and it's $30 to park and, and just to go into this area to shop and eat. And uh, so we pull in and the guy's, you know, waving me to go, you know, to the next parking spot. And I stop and I said, hey, are there any charging stations in this parking garage? And he said, yeah, they're down in the basement. And he hands me this special paper that you put on your dash and they let you go down to the basement. So we go down to the basement. Well, they must have had like, I don't know, a dozen charging stations. Well, again, it could have been, of course, my worst luck that they were all full, but praise ye, there was one freaking spot left. There was only one spot left. So had it been taken up, we couldn't have charged the car. But anyway, so there was one spot left. So I zip down there. I back in. I get the hose. I put the adapter on. I'm like, yes, it's the kind of hose that goes into a Tesla. The adapter fit on. I plug it in. I go to uh, use my credit card. And it's another one of those power stations that doesn't take credit cards. So you've either got to have their card or the app. So my wife says, okay, you know, I'm done with this. I'm just going to get the app. Well, come to find out we're in the basement of a parking garage with no cell reception. So, you know, your phone, all of our phones just say SOS. So she has to leave the parking garage and go outside to get a signal to download the app. She downloads the app, loads it up with a credit card, comes back. Uh, the app you basically put up to the charging station, and it, you know, it it takes your your information so it can charge you when you're done. So finally, after by now it's probably at least two hours down the road from when we started to charge the car. So finally. Uh, I plug it in, we wait, we wait, we wait. It keeps blinking green, it keeps blinking green, it keeps blinking green, it says it's charging. So we go and we do some shopping and we decide, okay, just to make sure we get enough power in the car, let's go ahead and eat here. So we ate there, um, hung out, so we leave, we go back to the car, uh, I unplug it, turn on the display, and we're back to 30%. So we have finally charged the car enough to get back to the hotel. Uh, So I put the thing on, and it tells me how much power it gave us, and it was freaking $2.40, freaking $2.40. And so we get in the car. Um, Denise wanted to run by Dodger Stadium, so we zip up to Dodger Stadium. Um, So this is on Sunday again. I don't know why I keep forgetting. Okay, so backtrack real quick. That Sunday morning, I didn't want to run back to Beverly Hills, so I I saw where Bel Air was. Well, Bel Air is just a little bit higher up the mountain than UCLA. Well, I knew uh, enough about the UCLA campus that I thought, okay, I'm going to run from our hotel to UCLA and then from UCLA up to Bel Air and then I'll run through the mansions up in Bel Air. So Sunday morning, my run was up to Bel Air. Come to find out, uh, Bel Air doesn't want you running through their neighborhood. So there's a a security guard there in his car keeping people from walking in. So I didn't get to run through Bel Air, although I did get to stop and take a picture, a selfie in front of the Bel Air gates and all that. So uh, so basically what I ended up doing was running uh, around the UCLA campus, which was pretty cool, uh, again, because it's a big, wide campus and, and really beautiful. So anyway, uh, again, part of the adventure was uh, running there on Sunday morning. Then Sunday, of course, wasted half the day trying to get the damn car charge. Uh, went up to Dodger Stadium, uh, saw that. Um, was interesting that it was up kind of up in the mountain. We never really realized that. Um, so then we left there and we drove back to we'd eaten so we drove back to the hotel 
hung out. Okay, so we get back to the hotel, and I park in a spot, not the one that had the broken charger, but one that looked like it might be working. Uh, plug the car in, and uh, it's a blinking green. By now, I kind of know that uh, you got to wait a little while and make sure it keeps blinking green. And it kept blinking green, so we went inside, hung out, went to bed. Um, and then my wife and I had to get up early Monday morning, so I didn't have time to run. Um, and we had to pack up and get to the Hertz Rental Center, uh, return the car, and then get on to the airport. So we get down there, I cross my fingers, we turn on the display, and the car is freaking at 100%. So I'm so mad that we could have avoided that whole day had there just been something that told us that the charger wasn't working. But anyway, um, so that was our little adventure on driving a an electric car as a rental car. So take... Hopefully, I can uh, prevent somebody from having to go through all the heartache. Uh, if you're going to go uh, to L.A. or you're going to go somewhere and you're going to be driving a an electric car that you've never driven before, do a lot of research on the plane. Uh, look at videos on just turning the windshield wipers on. I never figured it out. I mean, I could get them on, but I couldn't ever get them to go the speed that I wanted them to. Um you know, even just getting the radio to work was, we, I don't know that my wife ever figured it out. I never tried cause I was always driving. Um, it was just, it was just kind of a fiasco. It was, you know, they're fun cars to drive because it's like being in a go-kart and, you know, you push on the, the pedal and the car just flies and you, you let off and the car stops. You know, there's no, there's really not much of a glide, um, to it. So, so they're fun to drive, but, uh, warning to you guys, figure out, learn as much as you can about charging them, where you're going to charge them, where the adapter is, you know, it just, it floors me that, that California wants all this electric and blah, blah, blah. And yet there's no uniform electric hose that goes in all of the cars. There's no uniform, uh, way of paying. There's no, electric station, you know, there's no charging stations at the gas stations. You have to go to weird parking lots and parking garages, which I guess makes a little sense that, you know, you can't, you know, you're going to have to leave the car for a while. So they want you to be able to go do something, I guess. Um, but, uh, just, uh, yeah, not impressed with the whole electrical electric car thing in California. Um, so anyway, that was our adventure. Basically Monday morning, we get the car back. It's at hundred percent. We get on the plane. Um, we fly to Las Vegas. Uh, we're in Vegas for, I think two hours. So we ate at Payway in the uh, airport and kind of hung out and then flew out of, uh, Las Vegas. So I got to, you know, we got to see the strip. I got to take some pictures of the strip as we took off, um, all the way back to Oklahoma City, hopped in our gas powered car and drove back to Enid. And so that was my Los Angeles adventure. Um, so what I, uh, my tip for you guys is if you get the chance in your life to go on an adventure screw work, screw the things that you got to get done. They will get done. You'll figure out a way of doing it. Go ahead and go on the adventure and have fun. So, so even though the, the electric car was frustrating, um, it was a great time. Uh, I love LA. I love California. The look, you know, the beach, the palm trees, the sunshine, the sand, the houses, but, uh, too much traffic, too many homeless. Uh, a lot of the areas are dirty, um, too many weird rules and laws and taxes and, and things. It's a great, great place. Now, I'm, and I'm just talking about LA, uh, a great place to visit. I would not want to live there. Now I would probably live down the beach, you know, at Newport beach or, you know, up at Pebble beach or, you know, somewhere like that. I could probably live in those areas, but, uh, I would find it hard 
uh, to live in. I, I could do it, but I would find it hard to live in Los Angeles. But a great adventure. Got to do in and out Burger. Got to see the UCLA campus. Got to see a March Madness basketball game. Uh, I think Reggie Miller was there. We got to, you know, I kept seeing people around L.A. And you, you look at them and you're like, yeah, I wonder if they are famous. And, um, you know, you probably see more famous people than you realize. But um, got to go to Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, um, Hollywood and Vine, see the stars on the sidewalk, got to see the handprints, um, got to eat at some cool restaurants. So uh, overall, it was a great, fun, last-minute uh, trip to Los Angeles. And again, I highly recommend you guys take all of the adventures that you can uh, this episode has gone over. Uh, I tried to. I was going to scale these back to about thirty minutes to forty-five minutes. This one uh, has gone to an hour, but hopefully, you get one sweet little nugget out of this that helps you out. And again, a reminder: um, tomorrow, I will be on a conference call with this company. Hopefully, they will help me figure out a direction for either this podcast or my blog or basically what I'm going to do. And then I will let you guys know. And then hopefully I can start providing information or a service or a product that will really benefit you guys more than me just talking about uh, going on vacation. So uh, I would love it if I could make a million dollars just talking about uh, going on vacation, but I don't think I'm going to attract, you know, a million listeners a month uh, to hear me talk about uh, going on a vacation. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for listening to A Shaggy Duck Life. Uh, things could be changing soon as soon as I uh, talk to those guys. Uh, still working on uh, Banana Seat Bike, uh, the book, and also have been playing around with some of the painting things, uh, paint pens, so trying to figure out how I'm going to do some cool pop art and also been working on my thoughts for the Shaggy Duck brand. So hopefully uh, all of this uh, will come together. I've been listening to a lot of uh, mindset podcast episodes, uh, positive thinking. That's really been working out for me. You guys wouldn't believe uh, the more positive thinking and the the things that you can you can cause to happen by just having a better attitude and being on a higher vibration, whether you believe that in that or not. Uh, I do. It works. I've seen it. So um, good vibrations to everybody out there. And uh, thank you again so much for listening. And I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.